All right. I'm going to have to go back in time because I, I've been playing more than I've been recording. So I actually have to back up to this start here with Lewandowski. Um, so this is for my second set of wins for the third um, series of tournaments. Now, the problem with going back is that the deck was, it's been tuned just ever so slightly since then. So um, I will try to point that out if a card comes up that I'm not currently using, and I'll explain what I'm replacing it with. Um, but if not, then I'm going to be recording the other two uh, sets of videos, and you'll have the most current deck list up right about very shortly after this video goes up. So you can always just look for it there as well. So I had to mulligan my opening hand, and here's a reasonable keep against a um, Nissa is what we're facing. I actually don't remember exactly how this plays out, so we're just going to kind of run through it together. So turn two, Dimer Aqueduct. Off the, makes up for the mulligan, provided my opponent doesn't kill my land. He thought not Sears and does not take as foretold. Nobody respects the as foretold. And then he crop rotations into Temple of the False God and does not wasteland my Dimer Aqueduct. So I, I don't know what he was... I guess he was planning to go do it with the Expedition map, but that lets me play as foretold. We'll see how that works out here. can't believe I've won this game. This looks like a game I should have lost. I'm pretty sure if I was piloting the Nissa deck, I would have beaten me. So he makes a creature here. He has no cards in hand, but I get to, as foretold, during my upkeep, Vampiric Tutor and Deluge away all of his board except his lands and the Nissa, hitting a land drop, which was really nice. So my opponent sacks Expedition Map and uses it to go get a Eye of Ujin. Plays Tectonic Edge and then realizes he can't use it. Maybe he doesn't have Wasteland in his deck. Some people, I know that cost is a factor, so that may be what's going on here. But end of turn, I am able to, as foretold, and um, fetch a Winter Orb. I go ahead and play Brea because I need to press pressure Nissa. It's more important than getting Jace down. And now I'm sitting on as foretold um, Remand backup and a Winter Orb to deal with the Eye of Ujin. So I tap Dimer Aqueduct. My opponent still can't Tectonic Edge, edge me. And we're going to send in the team. So I get to cast a Snapcaster for free off of uh, As Foretold and use him to recast a Vampiric Tutor tapping out, and I pass. At the end of my turn, my opponent uses Eye of Ujin and goes and gets Emrakul. I thought he would go get um, Worldbreaker. So he gets Emrakul. I go ahead and remand it. My opponent now has control of my turn, and I Vampiric Tutored for Armageddon. So what is he going to do here? Cast Armageddon for free? Uh, there was almost no way out of this for my opponent, even though he is controlling my turn right now. In fact, there may have been no way whatsoever um, because of Winter Orb. So Winter Orb was in play. So he untapped my Dimer Aqueducts, and then he could cast Armageddon, but he won't be able to cast Deprive, so he can cast it off as foretold. Or he could, say, cast Painful Truce for zero. He could cast Jace. He could tuck away the Armageddon with the Jace. And then he could... He could spend two and have Brea and my Winter Orb sacrifice to deal three to me, redirect that damage to Jace and kill Jace and tuck my Armageddon. So that would have been his best play, right? Then on his turn, he untaps and does... Well, then I get to take another turn. That's the problem. So then I untap everything. Um, Painful Truce, paying the um, mana cost, of course, because we want to actually draw three. So use Dimer Aqueduct and Volcanic to Painful Truce. And then I, I would have drawn into Armageddon, even if he tucked it as low as he could go with Jace. And then I would have Armageddon off of As Foretold. So there was no way, no matter how you sequence this, that my opponent could beat me. And that's pretty crazy considering the absolute insane start he had. But he misplayed. I had to play like he would misplay because if I didn't, there was no hope for me anyway. So um, next time, though, next time he may realize um, sequence things differently. And then had he done that, I think he would have knocked me out of that game. So lucky me. All right. So here I'm playing against Zergo, and I have to mulligan. I'm going second. And I see my opponent lead off with Keldon Megalus. That looks very weak from a red deck, so I just wasteland it right away. It's not what you expect. You expect first turn Zergo, or in this case, Fire Drinker. So I tutored after that, and the card I fetched was actually Chrome Mox. I figure what I need here is speed. So we're going to get on the board as fast as we can. Sorry for that. And I'm going to go ahead and eat some damage here. 
Uh, he plays Harsh Mentor. I've got a sack in response, but he misses a land drop. So my read on his mana situation was fairly adequate. find myself a uh, Swords to Plowshares, which is really nice, but we're going to... I think I've got to play Brea first and then and then defend myself from there. So he plays Keldon Megalith. Uh, Mega? No, Keldon. God, I forgot. Marauders. There we go. I remember this card being terrible to deal with. Tries a double block. I Swords to Plowshares one of them and kill the other. Um, so... We're sitting pretty, for the most part. He sat. He killed. He bolts my um, card drawing engine over there, which is really interesting. I don't see red do that too often. Anyway, I painful truce. A painful truce against a red deck is often a bad idea, but not always, and certainly not when you're in the driver's seat like I am here. Now, at this point, my opponent's having big problems, so I'm going to add to those problems by tutoring up a Duretti. And killing Harsh Mentor. So his Mentor has done precisely zero damage to me over the course of this entire game. Um, because it doesn't trigger on Duretti activations. So once Mentor is off the table, he's still stuck on two land. And the game's basically over. Etched Champ. Unfortunately, does not have protection from uh, me. So he will have to try another time. Alright, game three. Uh, I'm playing against Karanos, and I finally don't have to mulligan, and I get to go first. So I go ahead and set up a pretty spiffy uh, hand there. The only problem here is I'm missing... I had Cascade Bluffs. That That is actually now Mystic Gate, the one that turns one blue into two white, or one white into two blue, or, you know, some combination of the two. And it would have been quite nice here if had it been a Mystic Gate, but it isn't, so I actually had to imprint a Palace Jailer here. I'm looking for Black Mana so I can cast Painful Truce. The problem is now my opponent can actually counter the Painful Truce. So what I'm going to try to do is bait with a Gush. Let's see what happens. All right, well, nothing happened, so let's try Brea. And nothing happened there, so I can always follow up with Painful Truce, drawing extra cards beyond the Gush and then discarding. Doesn't seem very good. All right, so my opponent, he's uh, digging, setting up his setting up his game plan, his situation over there. And I get a uh, Crucible, which is pretty decent, except if you look, there's actually no lands in my graveyard. I've been picking them up, not not sacking them. So I'm going to just play Line and Pass because I'm, I'm sitting on Forbid now. We'll just be patient. I really didn't want to imprint the Jailer because of the, you know, ability to remove a Karanos if Karanos becomes a creature. But for the most part, I found that against these decks, Karanos often does not become a creature, so... All right, my opponent Mystical Tutors, and he goes and fetches a uh, Jokel Hops. And plays his Karanos, so I will forbid with buyback. Discarding land and a Talisman I don't probably need. I'm going to go ahead and then cast the Crucible and um, play the Is It Boiler Works, most likely picking up the um, Cascade Bluffs, and then chill out using Grim Monolith to cast the Crucible, and then chill out on a... Uh, a forbid with buyback plan again probably not necessarily though i think another route i could have taken would have been uh tap grim cast will um the main thing is leaving up forbid right so will because i have to stop the yoko hops so will into um talisman gush something along those lines I don't know, that might have been better actually, but either way, my opponent just scoops with the Forbid. He knows that his next uh, big play is countered, and he's just going to lose to a tempo, so. Honestly, that guy was a bit of a joke. Hops. Anyway, um, moving to the next game. So, FX Crystal playing uh, the Gitrog Monster. Leads off with Dakmore Salvage. Another sign that the mana base is probably not very good over there. I saw a triple mana, and I'm pretty sure I shuffled it away and found even more mana. So not the greatest thing going on over here either. I have no way to interact early. And oh no. Is this an early Gitrog? Opponent overly respecting the UU that I was displaying, mana that I was displaying, does not play the Gitrog. So I go ahead and fetch and to turn. Fetch again right away. Cast Snapcaster into Ponder, and now I'm in good shape. Let's get that Vindicate into my hand and figure out what we're going to do from here. So he ramps out Gitrog now that I'm tapped out. 
gets to draw a card. This is all frustrating for me because I'm holding Notion Thief, of course. Cycles Ash Barons gets to draw a card and draws and plays uh, Expedition Map. Okay, so I take Getrog off the table, pick up a land, and with Dimir and attack for two. Opponent plays Tireless Tracker, gets a clue. And draws two cards with Sign and Blood. I'm sitting here with this Notion Thief watching all this card drawing, getting ever so frustrated. Opponent plays Sylvan Library, sacks a clue. Finally, I can flash out Notion Thief. I go, oh, no, is he going to kill it? Nope, he's just going to sack his other clue in response and get his card wisely played. I will draw off of for the clue. And I'm not going to double block here. He's got Sylvan. I need Notion Thief to keep that Sylvan pinned. I'm going to go ahead and hit him for some damage, but I wouldn't mind Snapcaster and Dark Confidant together um, trading out for his Tireless Tracker. And my opponent, who cannot use his Sylvan, and whose Getrog is not too great, given that I have Notion Thief, uh, does play a light and get a clue, and then just decides to scoop. He could have attacked me for five... Probably would have accepted the hit. And then, uh, excuse me, and then most likely either uh, bounced. I don't think I would have even bounced. Honestly, I would have just factor fiction at the end of his turn. Take five, whatever, factor fiction, and uh, go get what I need to uh, close out the game. But with this kind of pin, and apparently my opponent's hand's probably not super exciting, so he just scoops it up. Of course, he could not, FX Crystal could not have sacked. The uh, Is this a fifth game? One, two, three, four. Yeah, it is. Could not have sacked the clue that was sitting in play without dealing with the Notion Thief. And uh, in general, was in a tough spot. So here's an interesting fast start. And my opponent's playing the Gitrog Monster again. So it's, it's kind of funny, actually. All right, so I get first turn land into... Chrome Mox and printing Impulse because I am pretty sure Daze is going to either... I either want to Daze like a Sylvan here or a him, or I want to Daze... And actually, he plays him, and then I decide I'm not going to Daze it because as long as he misses Daze, it was smarter not to do it. And so here I go ahead and play a pickup land. I can hard cast Daze, so I don't need to worry about anything too crazy happening. Opponent tutors for a Wasteland, but he's, he's spending all his resources to try to deny my ability to play the game without enabling his ability to play the game. I mean, his commander is five, and he cares about his commander. Mine is four, and I only vaguely care about it. But I think he cares about it a lot more than I do, so I go ahead and play it here, and now I've got day's protection, and I intend to refill the hand very soon. So he plays some more disruption. Ooh, Yagmas will is very nice right there. So we'll go ahead and play land. So if I can will, I can play Dimer Signet, and then throw away a Mox, which would be pretty cool. All right, so I drew Cascade Bluffs. Again, that card is Mystic Gate. I go ahead and just will replay a land and play Nice Whisper. I messed up. I was supposed to play the Dimer Signet, but I was thinking I was going to go land into Is It Signet, and then I realized I can't then go Is It Signet into drawing two. My opponent edicts away a flyer. It's nothing. So I actually have one last mana than I should have here, which means I cannot both Factor Fiction and Notion Thief. It turns out to be relevant to some degree. So I a Factor Fiction in response to Dark Petition, because I could have then Notion Thiefed here and then dazed his, his play. For some reason he puts, I don't understand this at all, but he puts Force of Will in the pile with Ravages of War. So I go ahead and just daze it to pick up a land so that I can go ahead and Ravages with less lands going to the graveyard. And blow up the world. Play a land, float ancestral visions was the plan, and my opponent finally just gives up. However, oh, I was gonna, fl I was gonna float ancestral visions. I was gonna sack two, I was gonna sack a flyer and an artifact and deal three to my opponent. I think. Anyway, the game was uh, certainly over, and that was a quick 5-0. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I think I'll just go ahead and combine these videos, and we'll run through the losing set as well uh, for your entertainment. And then uh, I will have the other 3-0 videos separately. So this is the bonus uh, round. And this was uh, played today. So starting with Dark Diversion, ending in the finals with a loss. And you will see that in the most, it, for the most part, if this deck loses, it loses to draws that almost nobody could have beat or that, that are almost unbeatable draws. Uh, so you'll see.
Anyway, I get first turn expedition map. This opponent here, Dark Diversion, is playing Bile Smasher Chrome. I was actually really proud of these games because, as I recall, but this is the I think this is the set I'm, I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, Wurr is no longer in the deck. It is now Baby Jace. It is now Jace Vryn's Prodigy. So we will see what's better. But as it turns out, Wurr ends up being useful here simply because I'm able to, and you can see Mystic Gate is in over Confluence now. Wurr is useful here because my opponent chomps on the uh, bait that I'm throwing out here, if I remember right. Yeah. I were, he takes the bait. Thank you. Waste. He uh, floats the mana and trick binds it. Oh no. And I can cast Crucible. That's what I really wanted. We can get that Wasteland, we can get that uh, Wasteland Crucible action going. And my opponent, who's having mana troubles already, managed to play a grand total of two spells that game and uh, loses. <laughs> All right, so next round was Regeneration. And this guy, every time I thought I knocked him down, he just kept coming back. Um, all right, so Baral. Anyway, so he goes, so I mulliganed and scryed to the top of my deck. He uses portent on himself. I think if I'm him, I actually would have portented my stuff. If I wanted the top card, then, you know, don't let me have it. Unless he's just really digging for, for mana or something. So he does not go turn two, Baral. He goes turn two, Impulse instead. I assume that means turn three, Baral. However, I have, I remember this game. I, I felt like he was going to, um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, he trick binds me there. I, I, I felt like he had Stifle. I didn't see trick bind coming. I, I had to go for it, though. And so I set him up so that I could get tax on the table, and he force of wills it. So this is really bad for me with a Pact. Now I'm not comfortable playing the Signet, but I impulse during his upkeep, taking a Volcanic Island. And he tells me that that was a good time to have played the impulse, so certainly appreciate that. So I go ahead and play land now. I'm going to play it a little bit safe. If he tries to polymorph Mutavolt, we can waste it. If he goes for Baral, I can attempt a Mana Leak. If the Mana Leak doesn't resolve, then I have Jace as a follow-up. He goes for Shackles. I'm going to try to leak that, and he taps out for a counter spell. It's really nice. Throwing away Psychonic Rift, which is even nicer, and I rip the land, which I need to cast Chase here. So let's get Chase on the table. It's going to be hard to lose to... Uh, and I tuck a, a negate to the bottom of his deck. It's going to be hard to lose to uh, Emerald Cool this way. He then gets Tezzeret the Seeker. Um, activates it, fetches nothing, but he pluses it up so that... Uh, presumably so he can activate... Um, his uh, shackles and kill my Jace. So on my turn, I bounce Baral, and then, since he only had one mana left, go ahead and play Brea, thinking that I might entice him to do exactly what he did, sack the shackles and Brea and kill my uh, Jace, which is really lucky because he had a Pything Needle, and it could have gone... He could have Tezzeret in a Pything Needle, and this would have gone really poorly. With only one card left in his hand, I go for an attempted treachery on Baral, and it sticks, which allows me to kill his Muta Vault, attack Tezzeret, play a Dimer Signet, and pass with the Cryptic Mana up, plus one extra mana in case he draws a Force Spike. He draws, I assume draws, Jace. I go ahead and float a mana and counter it, discarding a land to Baral. He then fetches out Sapphire Medallion and passes. And at this point, I don't read him having Counterspell, so having drawn a Mystic Tutor there, I'm going to go for it. Mystical Tutor. Ponder. I have Palace Jailer hiding on top in case this goes wrong, fortunately. Armageddon with one mana floating. No Force Spike. Okay, and my opponent scoops it up. So that was an awesome game. And I believe Regeneration said that he was... Uh, Oh, I pointed him out my channel. So he said he was going to check it out. So hopefully he does. Hopefully um, if you've watched, if you're watching, actually, you enjoyed seeing the game from the other side of the table. So anyway, um, so that was game, what was it, one, two, three. So I had, I did have a break. <coughs> excuse me, that was game two. I had a 20 minute break, or excuse me, a, a half hour break. Uh, the first one was to... Uh, 
well, both of them were to hang out with my son and my wife. So anyway, that's the nice thing about leagues, and it's why I have been avoiding the uh, commander challenge or whatever. I, I I don't want I can't get I can't afford to get stuck in a tournament and not be able to break away and and be dad. So anyway, my opponent goes for um, my opponent has a great start here. So my opponent in round three is playing Carador. I have a very slow start. <coughs> And then for some crazy reason, he hits me for two here and does not clamp his his elf. I actually almost Snapcaster blocked it just to keep him from clamping it. But I thought that there was some... Well, I guess it wasn't totally crazy. I guess it was all right. But I thought there was a chance that um, if I didn't if I didn't make that play with Snapcaster, I might want Snapcaster later because I was planning to deluge. So he passed one of his guys in response, which gives him extra mana. Does a little extra damage to me. It's not that good. But I've been watching my opponent's mana base carefully. And I'm looking for when is the best time to wasteland. And so far, no opportunity has really presented itself. So he's now got a ton of mana. And I top deck treachery. How about if I snag that solemn so when he dies, I can draw a card. Because my opponent would draw off a skull clamp. But I assume skull clamp's going to get moved eventually. And now I've got a counter. I've got... Snappy. I'm feeling pretty good. My opponent plays Gaddock Teague. I could counter this, but I don't really want to. I don't really want to have to counter Gaddock Teague. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Teachings for Swords to Plowshares in case my opponent then follows up with his commander. And then I'm going to Tithe because I want to hit my land drops. So now if my opponent had Ravages of War or something, I would have just went Land Swords, I win. So obviously he's not going to make that play. Drew Lightning Bolt was awesome for his Dark Confidant right there. Swords the Teague, Bolt is Confidant, pass. And sitting on a Counterspell Plus, a Palace Jailer, which is huge. Opponent plays Yosai, sure. I could have Flashback Confidant and Swords did, but we're saving that for the Commander. I would much rather Palace Jailer that and start drawing extra cards. Let's go ahead and get some damage in. All right, things are looking very good. Put in place Wood Elves. Okay, not going to counter that. I'm holding an Armageddon. And he tries Palace Jailer. Ah, so it was well played there. He, he baited me, but fortunately I did not take the bait. Mox Opal's timely. Solemn is my third artifact, so I actually can use the Mox Opal. So let's go ahead and Armageddon here. And then I was going to Snapcaster, Swords to Plowshares, the Elf, and uh, charge up to Jeweled Amulet, smash my opponent for four. And I think we were in great shape there. And apparently my opponent agrees because he scoops again. Another big DZ rider giving it up for uh, Armageddon. All right, so here we got Magic Verse in game four, playing Anamar. And this was a game, watch this now. My opponent plays Carpet of Flowers, leads off Carpet of Flowers. My hand was Double Island. Can I present, prevent him from getting any Carpet of Flowers action over there? We will try. All right, so at the end of my opponent's turn, I unfortunately had to fetch uh, a Plains there. I didn't really want to because I only have so many Plains that I can tithe for here that aren't blue. As a matter of fact, knowing the deck very well, I knew I only had one more. All right, so we're going to go as foretold, and if this doesn't get dealt with, then I'm pretty sure I win. All right, as foretold, better than Carpet of Flowers. But it does get dealt with. I was really hoping he'd take the Mox, right? It's much more tempting. Kill the Mox, leave as foretold. What can it do? Unfortunately, my opponent is clever and knew the correct card to kill. So here, I go ahead and fetch a Badlands into Talisman into Brea. So far, my opponent's gotten precisely zero mana off of Carpet of Flowers. And he runs out Animar. Unfortunately, pro white and black means Brea cannot target it, even though um, you want to sack all blue Thopters. It doesn't care what the color of the sack is. It cares about the activation cost, and the activation is Brea. I should not have attacked probably with both creatures here. I am the control player. I should have played the control route. I do play an island here, and my opponent gets one mana off Carpet of Flowers, but that's okay, I think, because I'm planning to never give him mana again, but... I don't want to pay the 5 for Gush, so 
Go to evasive action Animar. I want to be able to hit land drops is the thing. Like this. So that I can cast basically what amounts to a zero mana winter orb. So let's do that. All right, in for some more damage. I'm trying to pressure my opponent into chump blocking or making mistakes. Now, I've drawn Remand, but the problem with Remand is it just, his creatures are so cheap with Animar, it just puts him back in his hand for more Animar triggers. Go and waste his untapped harbor. Send in for the team again. Finally, I get him. I do get him to chump block there with Gate Creeper Vine, which is nice. Want him chump blocking as much as possible. Far even of, like, right, if I... If I remand that, he's just getting a bigger Animar, so I can't really afford to do that. All right, so he's laying the beats. And I finally realize, I think, here, I should not have been attacking with the Thopters. I should have been holding him back to threaten to block uh, Reclamation Sage. So that's what I do. But on the other hand, I did get him to chum block there. I, I did pressure him a decent bit. Manowar, again, can't remand it. This is frustrating. Does he take the untapped Thopter? Well, he actually tr tries to... Uh, he actually tries to take... Uh, he tries to take the other Thopter for some strange reason. So I I sack it and another uh, and my Talisman of Indulgence to uh, kill his Rex Age and chump block his 6-6 um, six, six now. And then he plays... Uh, he played... Uh, uh, great whale. So I had to remand that back, and and then on my turn I'm able to deck fade away the islands that I've been sandbagging. My opponent plays Mall Drifter, and I'm I'm really in trouble here. I can't block Animar, and he just played Kessig Wolf Run. Like I can't. I don't have the life to Toxic Deluge, and I'm not playing Supreme Verdict, and I'm at two. So what do you do here? So I'm gonna pause this because. So what I had to do was. I had to get. I, I had to realize it was time to get rid of Winter Orb. I needed enough mana to deal with the board, and I just didn't have it with Winter Orb in play. I know my own opponent's last card is uh, Great Whale, so it's just basically a five-five no abilities. But the problem I'm dealing with is Kessig Wolf Run. Uh, any one of these creatures are lethal now. So I draw Disallow, which could allow me to stifle the Wolf Run, but that's not that great. Here I made a mistake. I should have thrown away Vampiric Tutor and probably teachings, but I end up throwing away counterflux teachings. It's a bit of an error there, because Vampiric Tutor at two life. Well, I'm at five, but it's swiftly dwindling. So I DT and Treachery Animar. So that's step one, dealing with Animar. I've got to deal with three creatures and a Kessig Wolf run. But I can play Brea. Now, Here's the deal. So I have three blockers for three creatures, and anything he tries to pump with Wolfrun, I sack and kill. What he is about to do, though, he actually, I believe he could have won here and did not see it, but I have to, I knew he could win, but I have to play like he can't. Again, um, I, I think, I think he can win. So the way he wins as I see it, he would have to be able to activate Kessig Wolfrun on, say, Mall Drifter for uh, like two, and then play, or even one, and then play his. Uh, well, first he has to play his his guy, right? So he plays the he plays a big guy. So now he can untap seven lands. So then what he should do is pump one of his guys. Does that even work? He might not be able to win here. I was thinking he could pump one of his guys here, but I guess not. Okay, well, maybe we were okay. Because I was thinking he could double tap Kessig and have two lethal attackers, and then I can't stop that. But no, I guess not. I guess we're okay. So anyway, I go ahead and block, block, block. He pumps the Manowar, I believe. Yeah, which was interesting. I wasn't expecting that pump. So I go ahead and sack and kill the Man of War in response. I'm now at two, and this is why I should have thrown away Vampiric Tutor. Of course, I get smart eventually and do exactly that. I'm also fighting the clock here, but I go ahead and play Doretti 
Uh, Ibrea away his small drifter. Doretti his great whale. He has no cards in hand. Uh, and attack him for nine. If my opponent finds himself a uh, primordial sage off the top deck, but that's all he's got. I'm about to ancestral. And then what I need to do here is uh, cast any artifact, Doretti away primordial, and attack for nine and kill him. And I believe that's exactly what would have happened had my opponent not scooped. In fact, I think I was able to cast, I think Brea was six, so I would have cast Brea, kill, swing, and win. Oh yeah, that's right. So Brea was uh, four. Because Anamar reduces the cost, the commander tax by eight right now, so I could have just cast Brea for four. That's why this is a 100% dead on board situation. So I just thought that was a great game against Magic first there. And now the game I lost against Toffel. Well done, well done, Mr. Toffel. Um, but I just, I mean, you tell me. Is there any way that I can win this? So I mulligan, and my opponent's playing Sale Saliva, 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 whatever. Saliva? Yeah, Silvala. Okay, there we go. Gets turn two, Selvala. I have Empiric for Toxic Deluge, knowing full well the uh, creature explosion that's about to happen. Underestimating how insane it was going to be. He Eldritch Evolutions in two. Oh gosh, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Draw one, get 12 mana. Man, if I could have stopped that somehow. But there was no way. <sighs> All right, 12 mana for me, for him. To Garrick, that's bad. If it had been just a creature, you know, um, a bunch of creatures on the board, maybe Deluge could have gotten me out of it. He does do some of that. But, of course, he drew multiple cards this turn. And then he doesn't Quirin the... He Quirin's Fauna Shaman, discarding uh, and going and get Reclamation Sage, and kills my Grim. So he's actually dumped his hand on the board, and this means I might have a chance. I was thinking that the thing he should have done was probably uh, pumped his Selvala for five more mana, but may I guess he ran out of gas. Problem is now he just replays Selvala and he's got Garrick to go with it. And I'm... My hand is just really clunky. So I'm going to go ahead and get some mana so I can get Brea down. He gets to draw yet another card off Selvala. At this point, that thing's drawn him like four cards and produced... Well, he could have produced up to... Uh, well, he could have produced even more, more mana. Of course, he draws another card here. Makes a gigantic beast. So I have to bounce a beast or I'm going to die to Garrick's ultimate. He sacks Elder. He could have ultimate. He could have taken me down to two here. But instead, kills Jace and takes me to 14. And if he ran out of gas here, maybe I have a chance, but... I also needed to hit a land, so having missed a land drop, not looking too good. It's looking semi-hopeless. I had no artifacts for Doretti. If I could have hit an artifact for Doretti to kill his um, Verdant, his gigantic 6-6, six -six, and maybe I would have had a chance too. If he didn't have Court of Calling right here, then maybe I would have had a chance, but it's just too much, too fast, too early. There's nothing I could do. I'm sitting here with two mana counters that I can't deploy because they're too slow. Like, once, once it... Once it a draw that good is just not... It's just not... I mean, I need Force of Will to get out of it. Or something like that. So anyway, when he goes and gets Fierce Empath... I don't even wait to see what he's going to get. Did he even reveal it? Yeah, no, he doesn't reveal it. doesn't matter, right? I assume he's going to go get Prime Time. And I'm definitely dead at that point. He's going to draw another card off it. It's just going to be insane, so... So that's it. So that's how you lose, but also how you win. So hopefully you enjoyed those games. And then where the deck is at currently... And I have one more... Uh, series to go is here. So you can see JVP is in the deck now. And we're going to see how that goes. But I, I, I have a good feeling. I think even against that Sovala game right there, if I'd have been able to play JVP at some point and then flashback a uh, flashback a Toxic Deluge, I might have been able to pu pull that game out and, you know, with just two Deluges to uh, back me up. But, um, so I, I think the card has a lot of promise. So we'll we'll see. Even though, yes, it's not so good when you draw both chases. I mean, we, we know how good both cards are, but 
how many times will I be upset that that I drew both? I don't know. Because I guess if Jace, if the little J, if baby Jace is flipped, I can uh, he can kill himself in the pursuit of um, flashback, and that's not so bad. Then I just play the big one. On the other hand, if I draw a big Jace and I and 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 draw into little Jace, then I just uh, brainstorm him away. So I I think it's probably totally fine. And what's really cool, he's a human. So naming human with cavernous souls will continue to have all kinds of benefits for us. And then of course once he flips, he's safe from our own toxic daily. So that's nice too. So anyway, that's all I've got. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.